energy markets. We need worldwide effort to invest in transformative clean energy projects to ensure that critical infrastructure is resilient to changing climate. Critical materials are necessary for our clean energy transition, including the production of batteries, need to be developed with high standards for labor and environment. Fast and reliable transportation infrastructure, including railroads and ports, is essential to moving inputs for refining and processing and expanding access to clean energy technologies. For example, the U.S. government just facilitated a new partnership between two American firms and the government of Angola to invest $2 billion in building the new solar projects in Angola. It's a partnership that will help Angola meet its climate goals and energy needs while creating new markets for American technologies and good jobs in Angola and I suspect throughout Africa. And in Romania, the American company New Scale Power will build the first of its kind small modular reactor plant. This will help bring online zero emission nuclear energy to Europe faster, more cheaply, and more efficiently. The U.S. government is helping advance the development of this groundbreaking American technology, which will strengthen Europe's energy security and create thousands of jobs in Romania and the United States. These deals are just some of what's in store. And we're ready. We're ready to get to work together, all of us, to lead efforts, to lead U.S. efforts, in my case. Appointed, I appointed Amos Hochstein, my special presidential coordinator, to deal with the rest of our colleagues. I'll lead the U.S. whole of government approach to drive a coalition and a collaboration with the G7 and our partners around the world, including private sector and multilateral development banks. I want to be clear, this isn't aid or charity. It's an investment that will deliver returns for everyone, including the American people and the people of all our nations. It will boost all of our economies. It's a chance for us to share our positive vision for the future and let communities around the world see themselves and see for themselves the concrete benefits of partnering with democracies. Because when democracies demonstrate what we can do, all that we have to offer. I have no doubt that we'll win the competition every time. Thank you. Now I invite President Van der Leyen to the podium. Thank you very much, Joe, Mr. President. Thank you, Olaf, Herr Bundeskanzler. We've just tried to overcome a global pandemic, and it shook the global economy, and then as the global economy was just recovering, Russia's vicious attack on Ukraine happened. Driving prices up everywhere from food to energy and casting deep uncertainty, especially in the most fragile countries. These are very severe challenges. We will tackle them head on. And this is why G7 partners are gathered here. But this must not, and it will not, divert us away from our affirmative agenda. To show the world that democracies, when they work together, provide the single best path to deliver results for our people and people all over the world, on climate, on health security, and on digital innovation. And indeed, last November at COP26, Thank you again, Boris, for the initiative. We announced our plans to step up globally investments in climate positive infrastructure. This was our response to the commitment we made at Carbis Bay. And I will never forget the start of this initiative at Glasgow together with you, Joe, and you, Boris. It was the beginning of a success story. Today, the world needs these investments more than ever. And that is what the Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment is all about. So now what should we do? We should work side by side. And this is the one and only way to maximize the potential of our investments and to demonstrate the power of development finance when it reflects democratic values. That is transparency, inclusivity and sustainability when it embraces high standards for the environment and for the workers, and when it mobilizes the private sector. That's what success looks like. 
On our side, Europe's response to the world's investment gap is global gateway. It's going to be under the roof of the Global Partnership for Infrastructure and Investment. It's the Team Europe approach. And to the 200 billion Euro, uh, dollars, dollars that have just been announced by the President of the United States, Team Europe is mobilizing 300 billion euros till 2027, over the next seven years, from both public and private sources. 300 billion euros for sustainable quality infrastructure and also for health infrastructure. Investments that are transparent and that improve everyday lives and bring real benefit for the communities on the ground. Global Gateway is fully at work and we're listening closely to the recipient countries so that we can better understand their needs and deliver the biggest impact. We already have many great examples to share. Some of them have already been named. The mRNA vaccine manufacturing plants, for example, we just extended this successful program to Latin America too. But for example, also the Great Green Wall, a project for food security and land restoration on the continent. Or take the submarine fiber optic cable, ELA, linking Europe to Latin America. The upcoming clean hydrogen project with Egypt, Namibia and Chile. And for example, constructing a port to connect Christmas Island in the South Pacific to the rest of the world. These are projects in the right direction to travel. They are designed and implemented in full consultation and partnership with the countries and population concerned, because that's our way to do business. So my point is, we need to see more of these projects get off the ground in every corner of the earth. And for this, we really need as democracies to pull our common weight. The European Union and Japan, for example, are already doing that, dear Fumio, as part of our connectivity partnership. Or South Africa has been named, where all G7 are supporting the just energy transition. And we will continue our work and do more projects together. We will optimize our collective power, because it is up to us to give a positive, powerful investment impulse to the world, to show our partners in the developing world that they have a choice and that we intend to step up in solidarity to meet their development needs. In doing so, we'll show once again that democracies are prepared and meet the moment. Therefore, my dear friends, let's continue the good work. Thank you. So now I may ask the Prime Minister of Japan, Kumo Kishida, to take the floor. え、まずあの、上等ホラフの空港and we're coming to you live from the 48th G7 summit that is currently underway in Germany. Just listening to US President Joe Biden as well as the EU President Ursula von der Leyen. And for more updates on this, our principal diplomatic correspondent, Svan Sibyl, is joining us live from Munich. Hello to you, Svan. Now, you have been tracking all the developments. What are some of the big takeaways? After day one, we just heard those statements there from U.S. President Biden and EU President Ursula von der Leyen. 
Well, uh, two key takeaways in terms of what uh, the G7 had to deliver today. First, of course, uh, what the President Biden has done, launch of that infrastructure partnership. Now, that is interesting given uh, that uh, it counters first China's Belt and Road Initiative and it comes just weeks after we saw what happened in Japan. The leaders of the Indo-Pacific, including, of course, the Indian Prime Minister, participated in the launch of the US-led initiative, the Indo-Pacific economic uh, framework and uh, these infrastructure projects which are primarily led by the US are aimed at making sure that the needs of the world when it comes to infrastructure are fulfilled in a transparent manner and does not lead to any debt crisis something we have seen when it comes to the Chinese debt uh, uh, Chinese infrastructure projects who have been uh, causing a lot of debt problems the second of course is the fact that the G7 leaders uh, uh, met and uh, the German Chancellor spoke about how uh, Essentially, when it comes to the biggest worry for them is the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So that remains the big worry when it comes to the G7 leaders. And uh, the G7 leaders essentially are, are, are sending a message to Moscow and also presenting a brave face when it comes to uh, dealing with uh, um, Russia's aggression uh, in Ukraine. And stay with us while we take a look at some other elements of this summit. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.